Hey, what up, people? I hope you're having a great day wherever you might be. Today, we're going to be talking about the Samsung Q90T QLED TV. I mentioned this TV several times already in previous setup tours, so I'm not going to bore you with the details and specifications or anything like that. Also, let me preface this by saying I'm in no way, shape or form a professional TV calibrator, nor do I consider myself an expert in the TV space. So I won't be getting extremely critical or detailed in this video. Instead, I want to talk about something much more relatable for the average consumer, and that's my likes and dislikes when it comes to this TV. Of course, these are all based on my experience and personal opinions. Let's kick it off negative Nancy style and get the dislikes out of the way since these will likely impact your purchase much more than the positives. The first thing is the stand. The actual construction of it is very solid, but the way that it supports the TV is terrible. My Q90T has so much shake and wiggle, even after safely tightening all of the screws as much as I could without damaging anything. While it's perfectly safe in terms of it flipping over or coming detached from the base, I can't help but have a nervous feeling seeing it rock like that. To go along with the stand, the Q90T does not support the no gap wall mount. Even though the back of the Q90T is pretty flat and should sit relatively flush, it's still not the same as the Q90R with the no gap wall mount attached. This brings me to my third dislike, and that's the fact that Samsung removed the One Connect box, unless you're in a region where the Q95T is sold. The One Connect box made it much cleaner and easier to use mounts like the no gap wall mount. On top of that, it kept cable management super clean and easy, which is not the case with the Q90T. Samsung did incorporate grooves on the backside for tucking in cables and routing them to your consoles, but it's still not ideal. Plus, if you're using thicker HDMI cables, they may not fit at all. The fourth issue I have with the Q90T is that it sometimes resets my custom picture settings and resorts back to the default state. It's an issue I found sporadically in the forums. I haven't figured out what exactly is causing this problem. I have the home setting enabled so everything should be saved and stored automatically. It's not every single setting that resets, which makes it even stranger. Sometimes it's brightness or contrast, and then other times it's the picture clarity settings. If you know of a reason why this is happening, please let me know down in the comment section. The fifth dislike I have is that the Q90T only has one HDMI 2.1 port. Granted, one is better than none, but with the capabilities of the latest gaming consoles, having at least two is almost a necessity, especially when comparing it to competing TVs in this price range. The next issue I have is shared all throughout Samsung's TV lineup, computer monitors, and even their smartphones. That's the fact that they refuse to adopt Dolby Vision HDR. I get it, I know they're pushing HDR10+, and that's fine, but there is zero reason why they can't support both. Plenty of other displays support both. Dolby Vision is an industry standard in the filmmaking space, so the lack of this support is kind of silly. Another common complaint among users with QLED TVs is something that I've personally seen, and that's the dirty screen effect. Basically, if you're viewing something that is white or lighter in color, you'll notice darkened areas around the edges and corners of the display. This makes it appear kind of dirty or like there's a vignette applied to the image. It's not terrible by any means and shouldn't be a reason to not buy this TV, but it's there and it's still kind of annoying. Lastly is the price, and this is a weird one. The Q90T is a great TV for the price, especially with the recent price reduction that places it at 2000 bucks for the 65 inch model that I have. The issue is that other manufacturers have also lowered their pricing. For instance, the LG CX series is now the same price, which features four HDMI 2.1 ports, Dolby Vision support, a better stand, and it's an OLED panel, which many people prefer. Trust me, I'm not trying to take away from the Q90T because it has a lot of amazing things going for it. It's just that the competition right now is really strong. With that being said, let's talk about some of those great things that it does have going for it. First off, despite the stand being meh, the newer design of the Q90T is actually really nice. The slimmer bezels and solid construction make it look and feel like a modern TV. The only thing I would like to see is the thickness of the TV taken down a notch, but that's just me being extremely picky. The actual picture quality is the biggest selling point of the Q90T and the main reason why I love this thing. Blacks get very dark for a non-OLED panel and the whites get very bright thanks to its high knit panel. This brightness also helps with reflections and glare during the day, so windows should not be an issue. Colors are also excellent, but of course, these things can be adjusted inside of the settings. Viewing angles are another excellent feat of the Q90T since it offers some of the best on any TV that I've personally used. Also, 
HDR content looks awesome despite the lack of Dolby Vision. To go along with the amazing image, the 4K upscaling is phenomenal thanks to the Quantum Processor. 1080p content looks incredibly sharp with plenty of detail that could easily pass as 4K. I've even seen 720p upscaled to 4K on this TV and it looks great. Gaming is also awesome, especially if you're using the HDMI 2.1 port. In fact, this is my favorite TV so far to game on. The dynamic range, contrast, colors, and motion looks so good when playing PS5 games. Additionally, the Q90T has a 120Hz refresh rate, which really adds to that gaming experience. Plus, it has FreeSync support, so you can connect a compatible PC and get smooth motion on the big screen. Another huge win for the Q90T and really any relatively modern Samsung TV for that matter is the software. Tizen OS is really nice on their TVs and functions beautifully. I love the layout. It's easy to use and everything is easy to find. There are several useful apps, including things like Netflix, Hulu, Prime, and even Apple TV. Plus you can download a lot more, including different games. Plus Samsung includes free movies and TV that you can watch right away. For exercise and fitness, Samsung Health is included, which has several different challenges, workouts, and routines, all for free. SmartThings is of course supported, so you can tie the Q90T into your smart home or control your smart home using the Q90T. Of course, Bixby is the default voice assistant, but Samsung allows you to change it to Amazon or Google Assistant within the settings, which is really nice and adds to the SmartThings support. Oh yeah, the Q90T also supports AirPlay, so if you're invested in the Apple ecosystem, casting to this TV from your Apple device is really easy. Lastly, the speakers on the Q90T are really good, and they support Dolby Atmos. I used the Q950T soundbar system on mine, which I reviewed not too long ago. You can check that out at the card at the top of this video. However, before I had that sound system, I was using the TV speakers, and I can easily go back to just those TV speakers. They sound really good with plenty of range and detail. Here's a quick listen for yourself. The Q90T is an excellent TV and one that I can recommend, but it does have its downsides like anything else in life. The positives, in my opinion, outweigh all of the negatives when it comes to the Q90T and the experience it delivers. I can't wait to try out some of the newer 8K QLED models that Samsung announced not too long ago and see how they compare against the Q90T. If that's something you're interested in, make sure to subscribe and click the bell so you can be alerted when that video goes live. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, leave them down below in the comment section, and I'll see you beautiful people in the next one.